Good morning. It is day, I think, three of shelter in place due to what is currently going on in the world, which is a good thing because I actually have a lot to do in the garden. So today I'm probably going to be spending some time out there. I also need to do some additional plantings because I had a little bit of an issue with the sprouts that I already had started and hanging out around the house and doing a bunch of work. So I figured that I would just start bringing you guys along um, and go about our day and see what life in quarantine is like. So a few weeks ago, probably closer to a month, I had originally planted a bunch of seeds that I was going to be putting out for crops. I had tomatoes, I had peppers, um, I had broccoli and cabbage, and I had an issue. I had transplanted all of the broccoli and cabbage already. However, cutworms came in and took out the entire thing. And then I accidentally left the tomatoes. That was just a little too early here. I'm still um, waiting potentially on another frost in two weeks. So I am going to be restarting all of my sprouts today and then doing additional ones because it is time that I can start more than I had originally done. So I have my seed container here and I organize everything. I can do a separate detail about everything that I have in here and what I've organized. But basically I think today I'm gonna to be starting again with the broccoli and cabbage. Um, and any brassicas that I have, as well as all of my tomatoes, all of my peppers, and I wonder if there's anything else that I can start. I can do Swiss chard. Um, I can probably start green beans as well, but I'm gonna wait on some of the more summer crops because we might still get another frost. But for right now, I can keep most of these indoors and transplant them. That way I can have a, a fairly early crop this year. So I have both trays and then I also have individual pots here that I can plant up. Um, I'm going to start with the trays. I typically like to use these because when I'm transplanting I can just pull out the plants that I want and not waste an entire pot. Um, these are typically what I'm going to use for crops that I'm going to transplant when they're smaller. Anything that needs to stay in a pot for a little bit longer I'm going to put in the individual ones. And then for mix I have here. Um, the Happy Frog Potting Soil Mix, and it's by Fox Farm, which is a fairly local soil company that we have to my area. And I'm going to use this and get started. In this tray, I'm gonna start my Swiss chard and my spinach. Both of these are from MI Gardener. The Swiss chard is a rainbow variety and the spinach is red Malabar, which I believe is actually not a true spinach. I believe, I don't wanna say it's a vining, but I believe it's more like a vining plant. However, it's eaten as a spinach. And I've never had this one, but I'm really curious to try it. I do really enjoy spinaches. And then I'm also gonna plant um, Romanesco broccoli which I really like because it's more geometric looking and I tend to gravitate towards the weirder looking vegetables. This one is a Baker Creek seed. I'm also going to plant the Mammoth Red Rock cabbage. Um, I have never actually grown cabbage before. This was my first time trying and because I lost everything, I figure I might as well try again. And then broccoli, I'm going to do, it's called Waltham 29. And all of these three seeds are from Baker Creek. So I'm gonna put all of these five different ones in this tray. I'm just gonna do lines in here and then cover them up, water them, and I will put them probably on my patio, that way they don't get too cold overnight, but I think that these ones should be okay to start outdoors because our weather is starting to warm up quite a bit.
these are the red Malabar spinach seeds. They're quite large compared to other seeds that I'm going to be putting in this same flat. Here are the rainbow chard seeds. These ones are kind of funky looking. They almost look like, if you know what a goat head looks like, um, which is a weed, they put off little um, seeds that look like a goat head and they're really spiny. But these kind of remind me of that, except they're not a weedy, painful seed. So here I planted the spinach seeds, the Swiss chard, I did two rows. I did red cabbage, regular broccoli, and then Romanesco at the end. So I'm gonna cover these up and they may get a little bit mixed up, that's okay. I'm not one that really cares about where my seeds are labeled. I can usually tell what they are as they start to grow a little bit. Um, some of them you can determine what they are based off what the sprout looks like and then others you have to wait just a minute for a full leaf to come on but it should be okay for what I am doing. Let's see, it looks like everything is covered except that little guy is popping up. And then I'm going to water this in and put it under my patio. All right, next up I'm gonna plant my tomatoes and I'm gonna put these ones in individual pots. So I'm gonna start out with large red cherry tomatoes from M.I. Gardener. I'm going to do boxcar willy tomatoes, which is also from M.I. Gardener. I have true black brandy wines and these ones are from Maker Creek. I'm also going to do the solar flare tomatoes. These ones are also from Baker Creek. And then I'm also going to do the black cherry tomatoes, and these ones are from Baker Creek. I have tomatillos here as well, and I'll probably get these started today as well because I'm going to want to be able to make salsas with this and the tomatoes together. potato bed. I had originally planted 24, but so far only 20 have come up. However, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the two that are missing is this one right here, and then I believe that there should have been another one here because there was another row. Um, so I did Yukon Gold, I did the blue potatoes and red potatoes, and the blue potatoes are my favorite, but this was the very first one to come up, and it's doing pretty well. I'm not sure if I'm going to hill my potatoes or not, I have done potatoes in the past in laundry baskets and I did hill them, um, but I've also heard that people have tried doing both hilling and non-hilling the same years and the yields weren't any different. So I may not do it this year, but you can see the little bit difference in leaves and that's how you can tell which potato plant is different from the other. 
And then over here is my garlic and my onion bed. And you can see that the animals have been getting in here. So some of them are knocked over, which is a little frustrating, but I planted extra on purpose because I knew that would happen. And actually, if you look at the soil, it kind of looks like there maybe is a gopher or something that's coming up underneath them. I thought the gophers don't like onions and garlics, but it's okay. I'll deal with it. We have a really bad problem here, so I'm gonna have to figure out what to do this year about them. So I do still have quite a bit more planting that I need to get done, but I'm trying not to do it all in one day because I want to spread out my harvest throughout the year and then also my fertilizer schedule. So I'm probably gonna wrap that up here and then I'm planning on doing an individual video for each type of plant that I'm growing. I already have all of the onion video filmed. I just need to do a voiceover on that one and I'll probably do a specific potato one as well and probably some others on how to grow. If, there, if there's any videos that you guys specifically want to see, let me know and I will make sure that they happen. Thank you.